Seven minutes to go to the first set to four match here at the University of Worcester Arena. Don't forget, alongside this fantastic game of our Super League netball, we have Beach Ball Bash in our first quarter break. Half time, we have Holly's Performance Academy bringing you some fantastic camps for your team to your entertainment. And we also have Shop It Up in our third quarter. And then we call it the conclusion of the game. We will have now those of you who hit the building tonight to please squeeze up, make sure all of the seats are taken. Got some groups in the building tonight to get in. Let's have a look at the starting seven. Good evening, Tamsin. Let's see. Seven stars. Let's see. 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 let us here at the University of Worcester Arena. It's seven stars against Manchester Thunder and we are sold out. This has the ingredients to be an absolute cracker. Both teams are unbeaten this season, three from three. Seven stars are having their best ever start since joining the Super League in 2017. You can see the fans poised and ready for this one, as is Tamsin Greenway alongside me for this match, Tamsin. This, as I mentioned, has the ingredients to be superb. One and two in the league in the early part of this season. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not sure that we're necessarily expecting that well as we're heading into this season. Stars were so good last year, but we weren't sure how they were going to be coming to the start of this one. But they've continued where they left off last year. Their structure defensively has been so impressive, especially how they zone um, across the court, led by Joe Tripp, of course, bringing her Kiwi influence. Well, the best defence in the league, as Tamsin's alluded to, is seven stars and the top scorers are Manchester Thunder. Where's, yeah. it, where's this going to be won? <laughs> well, where do you think? Well, it's really interesting, <laughs> isn't it? It's all about the matchups. I say that every season. How do each team counteract each other? We know Thunder is so solid in terms of their short shot. We've actually seen a real mixture in their shooting circle when they've had a Paige Reed and Lois Pearson on there. They've had that rotating kind of style of play. Nat Metcalf allowed to just dictate, run that whole end third. But of course, when they bring the South African on band, the bar is totally different. That tall target shooter in the circle. I'm sure you'll see both styles tonight. So let's have a look at the starting sevens for both sides. Let's start with the home side of Seven Stars and head coach Joe Tripp. What do we make of this now kind of solid looking team, Tamsin? Are there any changes at all from last week? Why can't I see any? No, and why would you when you're three from three? It's a perfect start to the season, and I think they're building those connections, aren't they? Look, we talked about them strengthening their bench this year, and the likes of Ari, Decker, Ella Powell Davis, uh, the South African international runner, and they could all be starting at different teams. Creek as well, but it's this solid unit. Joe Tripp, Jazz Brown in the back, partnered out the front with Gavin Marsh and Lee Cooper. They're workhorses in terms of what they're setting up out the front. And that link, that connection, that relationship between Jess Shaw and Ziggy Berger has been lethal. Well, talking about relationships, let's have a look at who Karen Gregg has gone with, with her starting seven Tamsin. Yeah, well, they've got that rotating circle, and they were Paige Reed and Lois Pearson. Lois Pearson having a great start to the season. She's on 92% at the moment. That Metcalf in the wing attack position. Of course, Amy Carter and Imogen Allison, we've seen them too the other way around as well, centre wing defence. But that, I think, is where they're probably most comfortable. The South African, Shadeen van der Merwe, has had a great start to the season. And, of course, with no carry on in the squad, Josie Huckle gets the card with her and So they're the starting sevens for both sides. 
as we mentioned, both of them are top in terms of the 1-2 of the Super League. The lights go out at the University of Worcester Arena. It is loud in here tonight. And we see the Seven Stars team coming onto court. I mentioned it's celebrating international colours. All of the worldwide superstars of netball that take part in the Super League. We've got a lot on display from international colours tonight, Tams, especially South Africa, a huge presence in both sides. Yeah, absolutely. And we talk about this all the time, our league being such a good stepping stone for some of the other nations. And we've seen the fans of some incredible players over the years. You know, when you talk about the likes of um, Carla Pretorius, who started off playing with us, and you've had Jamaican Shamira Sterling. I mean, and then, of course, you've had all our England internationals and the home nations as well. So it's such a good opportunity for players now. I'm going to see that well, we're talking about opportunity. This is a huge opportunity for Seven Stars tonight in front of a sold-out crowd to pull themselves away, potentially, at the top of the Super League. They've only ever beaten Manchester Thunder once since they joined the Super League back in 2019, Townsend. What is Joe Tripp and her side got to do in particular so the fans will go home happy with a second win over the four-time champions? Well, Thunder are renowned for that short, sharp attacking style. They don't give cheap ball away. That's why they're so successful. And actually, they've had a slightly different run to stars. They had that first challenge with the opening game of the season against London Pools, which they got over the line. So I think they've got um, a fantastic opportunity today, stars, but it will be tough. They're going to have to stop that short, sharp Thunder style. Give me a couple of combinations that you're looking forward to then when we've now been through the starting seven, a couple of matchups. Yeah, of course, Susie Liversidge for me on um, Shadine van der Merve is going to be huge. Remember, they've got Radaman on the bench who can impact as well. And then it's about that um, defensive unit, Jazz Brown and Joe Tripp on Lois Pearson and Paige Reed. Can they shut it down? Can they shut it down, asked Tamsin Greenway. Can they shut it down? That's what the fans are asking here this evening. They're in the huddles, the knees are being taken by both teams. So seven stars against Manchester Thunder. The first match in round number four. Team Bath and London Pulse are going off at the same time at half past seven this evening. We'll keep an eye on that one. But can seven stars continue the role that they are on? Or can Karen Gregg's side show them why they've won the Super League title four times? The first centre pass is coming. Louise Travis and Rachel Radford. There they are, right on cue due to take charge of this one. Well done, Louise Travis. She took part in a 200th Super League match in the last round in terms of umpiring. Here we go then, Tams, in first centre pass. The experienced Gabby Marshall gets us underway. Yeah, and already you see that Thunder style of defence sitting in behind, getting the big arms over, keeping them away from the edge. Josie Huckle sliding in behind from Siggy Berg and getting that early turnover. That is something else that they will have to watch as well. The connection into the circle has been so key with Jesha on Ziggy. We're just going to have to look at the Thunder positioning. I'm happy to put ball over arms as well, which is, which is tricky when you first start. Adri playing against her former side, starting tonight in the goal shooter position. And quite ironically gets the first goal against the former side on the board. And you see that exit already from Pedri. Look at this, just short shot. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. You can't always defend the one twos but what you can do is get onto the next ball you've got to stay in the game though you see jazz brown being out of the circle there on the penalty and you don't want to give this side three shots so how you work that circle edge and what ball you decide to go on is really critical marshall looking for options cross court in the center third already you can just see they've not got the same flow have they seven stars and not being able to get to that circle with the same sort of ease they're being kept at the court. Great shot down from Imogen Allison. That's the push behind from Josie Huckle. And that was a much better play. Using Susie Livesey for one more ball before they open up Berger. <laughs> Siggy Berger on form. Shot at 96% in that win against Team Bath. A 72-44 win. The South African in super form in 2024 so far. A smart play from Amy Carter, wasn't it? She saw the big smother from Joe Tripp at the top, waited. There was Pearson patiently playing in on the baseline, really complimenting Paige Reed, who's doing the short shuffle shots on the edge. Early matchup we've been talking about as well, Van der Merwe on Susie Liversidge. 
under them with a slim two-goal lead in the first 15 minutes. Head coach Joe Tripp around the outside line, right in front of the commentary position of myself and Tamsin. And Berger puts another one up and slots another one in. It was edgy though, wasn't it, the feed? Just Shaw looked at it for ages. She wasn't quite sure. Josie Huckle already doing a heap of work, getting her footwork to get around Berger to really confuse the space. There's that baseline again. You can see it textbook from each end. Pedri playing high into the circle. Coming out the top, exiting all the time, just giving Lois Pearson so much space. Quick shot there of the Thunder bench. Head coach Karen Gregg has the unique honour of winning the Super League as a, a player, assistant coach and a head coach. And there's the bench of seven stars. Just had a quick chat with that familiar face there, Tams, and Rachel Donner, you know very well now in the technical coaching role. I do, I recognise her there. Yep, she's <laughs> doing some shooting work uh, with the seven stars. And it's absolutely loving, actually. I think it was too much for Rach just to retire and not be a part of the game, so it's great to see her on the bench, giving her input as well. Metcalf looking for options, finds it in the corner pocket in the form of Amy Carter. There's that short ball again, isn't it? How, how do you get on top of that? And just see how close it gets them to the post. It's important when you've got a smaller circle that you do that. Spoke a lot about Lewis Pearson in the build-up with that 92% accuracy. She's almost like an unsung hero of this Thunder side. Berger out the circle, back in position if needed. And you feel they're going to have to do that more to build up, to get across this back mark, because Thunder are trying to keep them up the court so high, you've got to get a release somewhere, so it's smart by Berger. Putting all kinds of pressure on Liversidge. She's not the one that wants to go to the post as much. She's much happier offload. Oh, lovely. Light footwork from Amy Carter. Brilliant, they make those one twos look absolutely effortless. They're really, really hard. The timing and the entry of Amy Carter into the end third is what pulls it off. At the minute, she's coming in so free, she's plucking out the, the gaps in this seven star zone and really opening it up for the Thunder attack end. <laughs> oh, this is the start that Karen Gregg would have wanted as a commentator's first picked up by Jazz Brown now Gabby Marshall gets the crowd going couple of long throws chance for Berger you can just see the obvious difference can't you Thunder with the quick flick offs one twos all the way down the court extra pass swinging it around changing the angles seven stars far more direct when they're allowed to flow like that they get Ziggy Berger on a one on one Shaw with an offside on the centre pass. She'll be disappointed with that. Just got inside back in the game. So many of the players on court this evening featuring in the statistics in terms of the pot first part of this season. Metcalf leading the way with fees as she did last year through the 2023 season. Jess Shaw there, Tanzan mentioning her. 97 so far in third place and Berger having an absolute stormer so far in second place in the top scores behind Love for Lightning's Mary Chollop. So we're expecting goals here this evening and so far Thunder are leading by seven goals to four. Yeah, absolutely. I mean the feeds are brilliant. Matt Metcalf on the ball now. <laughs> Just that puts that ball into Paige Reed there. She's so good in terms of her vision and opening up the circle. I mean, I'll give her a few extra, though, because they play it in one-twos like this, and they shuffle shots in. She gets a few more feeds on the stat board. But she's having an exceptional season once again. So experienced, Metcalf. Leeds, Yorkshire, Wasp went down under and played, didn't she, for the Swifts? But now a chance for seven stars. Josie Huckle. And long socks. Yeah, that was smart by Josie Huckle there. She made it look open. It. They put a flat ball in. She got around. Unlucky not to come away with that. do more work on that they're not able to shut it down at the minute it just breaks this zone they're not able to set up in their usual box formation you've seen from stars relying on the missed shots Pedri takes a look at the umpire she wasn't happy with that it's kind of the danger of the shorter shooters in there because you're not in a rebound position I don't want to think about actually blocking each other off but this gives stars a great opportunity 
And there's the one-on-one. -on -one. So much better when Susie Liverses gets that exit. Isolates Josie Hoffall and it's an easier ball in. Janine van der Merver, unlucky not to keep that in. I mean, Gabby Marshall kept looking at Susie Liversidge, didn't she? She asked her to about three or four moves. <laughs> it was never really on. Gave her it anyway. Very lucky to get away with that. Liversidge across the shooting circle. Back to Marshall. Has to bring the deficit just to one for the home side. Berger obliges. Oh, and a little <laughs> dance move as well from the South African. Well, she'll be happy with that. It was a brave ball. She never really had the angle to go through, but she'll put it in anyway. That's that trust between them. It's better from Jazz Brown. She's got to start challenging on that paid read exit. Reed having a little shake of the head. I think she's trying to draw the penalties on the shot in particular not happy with that kind of attention at the moment it's a solid turnover from thunder such great play you see the early swing from metcalf there she didn't wait for the shooter's entry she knew she was wide pinged it wide open Allison on the board, one of those movers and shakers at the end of last season, of course. Moving now into the Manchester Thunder dress. Seven seasons she spent at Team Bath. Indeed. That one thrown straight to Gabby Marshall. A great intercept by her. She challenged it down, chased down the ball. And that was another big turnover from Seven Stars. But not able to settle it under the post. Into the big arms of Ziggy Berger. <laughs> Berger and Huckle. I'm here for it. It's I'm enjoying it. It's going to be a battle. <laughs> I think both sides will be slightly unhappy with some of the unforced stuff they're putting in at the moment. You know, throwing those balls into arms. Should be a bit of a given that they get that around. It's certainly matching up well. A little blast from the DJ here at the University of Worcester Arena. Stars bringing it back to two, Thunder 10. Just over five minutes remaining of the first quarter. Seven Stars haven't lost a quarter this season so far. Such is the flying nature of how they've come out the blocks in this 2024 season. Now Stars let off the hook there. With Josie Hooker marking out of court, but the shutdown was impressive. They're really smothering that middle. They're really struggling once they get in position to open it up, they've got to almost get quicker to that edge or quicker at least driving down the court. Because that's the only time they isolate Huckle on her own. This is where Thunder is so good on that pressure on the line. Look at that, keeping all players up the court. Much better from Liversidge there. You see, she picked and timed to drive to the top, so it was it was a bit more subtle. She wasn't sweeping across. And certainly, think that exit from Berger helps as well. It just keeps her ticking over when she's under all that kind of pressure from Huckle. Allison then picks it up. That calf, nice little pivot, little 360. Oh, it's close to a hell ball there. It was one of the first times we've seen in this quarter where the box was able to set up. There was no movement, there was no one on. The big arms from Joe Tripp. They really want to watch these penalties in the circle because it's giving them an out, isn't it? It's allowing Pedri and Lois Pearson just to get that bit closer to the post. Gary Marshall in absolutely no hurry. She knows she's got about another 47 minutes of running around. Yeah, there was no pace in, in Gabby's <laughs> effort there to get the ball back on her centre pass. Back in her hands now. Oh, and that was a nice play from Jess Shaw to use the back mark against Amy Carter, drew up and then dropped into pocket. And that's the outlet from Ziggy Berger, not able to hold it in though. 
And that is the problem if that's your only outlet because Huckle knows it and it allows her to challenge. Flying Marshall, nearly. So we've got a hold up from Stars in it. Not able to get that drive through the court. and hold from Paige Reed. She just pinned Jazz Brown at the top of the circle. Perfect timing out of it. But Stars a much better job in slowing this Thunder attack down. I feel like they've got to do more of that. Yeah, I'm not sure how Matt Metcalf didn't get called for a contact on that. But she's taken the ball with her. I get it, Jazz Brown not happy as well, thinking that's her ball. She's been sat on the floor. Triangles around the circle, effortless from Thunder at the moment. Training ground-esque. Working in their favour, a four-goal lead. Sure, again, looking for options back to the head coach's hands. With a cinch, another import this year in terms of coming from a Super League side of Loughborough Lightning. And that wakes the crowd up and gives them something to cheer. Yeah, and you feel Livers has just got to come and get out the ball more. When, when Ziegeberg is the only outlet for them going through on attack, that's when they're in trouble. So Berg has either got to come right out or Livers has just got to do more work on Shadeen van der Merwe. It's a great shot from Lois Pearson. Let's have a look what they do this time. See where their outlet is. It's a better centre pass. I like that they're untouchable, which is why they're at top of the table at the moment. They're one, two, threes into the circle. Back to three, less than one minute to go. Metcalf, as usual, with the vision. Every inch of the court here at Worcester being used. Yeah, that was nice vision from Metcalf, wasn't it? She really opened up that end third. It's on from a very short, sharp game at the start of this quarter to slightly longer feeds going in. See the shouts from the Stars bench at the back of your shot. Uh, and Susan Livesey never looked comfortable with that, did she? Miranda Merva back on her feet, she's good. Still time, still 10 seconds. She's going to hold time on that, so they've got an opportunity to whack it in the circle. What a smart play. Sitch and draws the contact, Ziggy Berger gets the opportunity to just rip it in, and she does. It will go on to the scoreboard for seven stars. At the end of the first 15 minutes, Manchester Thunder leading seven stars by 16 goals to 13. A big opening quarter from Karen Gregg's side. First loss of 15 minutes for seven stars here on their home court. But wow, you, you said so many different things in that first 15 minutes, Tamsin, in terms of how it was just changing from short to long to wide and all the different players. Sum it up for us in terms of that first quarter. Yeah, well, I think it's been quite interesting. Thunder had uh, definitely done their homework in how they were going to attack this stars zone defense. So, you know, it's unusual to not see Jazz Brown be able to come out and he flies or um, all that partnership of Neve Cooper and Gabby Marshall can shut down players for longer. They did that by the short, sharp little one-twos going into the end third, but also with Paige Reed exiting. And she was coming so early, no one was on it. So it was just so open all the time. What was interesting though, is as the, the stars defense dropped earlier into their box, it meant then Thunder could go over the top. And this is the, the quality that Thunder have got, because if you let Nat Metcalf have vision to go into that end third, she's going to absolutely use it, which is what we saw in that start of There was a lot of Paige Reed and not as much of Jazz Brown. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's, it's about how we talk about the matchup. What Jazz Brown wants to do is have time to see things. There was nothing to see. I think the entry of Amy Carter was, was coming in so free. And because Joe Tripp was so high and she was having to get pulled then back onto Lois Pearson's face by drive, it isolated Jazz Brown. And Jazz Brown's strength is not on a rotating, hexing out the circle. So what they're going to have to talk about for this second quarter is how they 
maintain their consistent structure, it might make it narrower. It might make it a pair work rather than the whole four. But they're going to have to slow down the ball in front if you want to expect the Jazz Browns to be effective. We saw just before this shot, Townsend, Gabby Marshall, you know, landing planes, directing traffic, the captain of Seven Stars, giving instructions. What will she be saying in particular and who to in her team? Well, there's two parts of it, isn't it? She'll be giving information in the defensive unit and what her yep, need people are going to do. You can see she's already talking to Joe Tripp about that. But they are going to have to focus on this attack end as well because so often they were kept in a line of three. So Jess Shaw, Gabby Marshall kept up the court. Susie Liversidge and either pushed into it or totally marked out the game on a one-on-one. -on -one. And, and then the problem is it was so obvious who it was going to go to and Siggy Berger was then getting challenged. So again, how does Gabby Marshall get some depth on Amy Carter, even if she's the draw card at the minute? How do you get Susie Liversidge into the game to make sure you isolate her for one-on-one from better positions? And Nat Metcalf there, in terms of Manchester Thunder, having a, a quick word with Louise Travis and Rachel Radford. Anything particular that you think she'll be having a word about? Well, I should imagine Nat Metcalf was talking about the defence on the shot. That would be something they were frustrated about. You saw Paige Reed sort of shaking her head a lot as she went into that circle. And I think it was just that sort of defensive pressure around that shot. Like I said, they're a smaller circle and they've got to look after each other a little bit more. Gabby Marsh, it'll be interesting to see what they're talking about. I think she's, she's asking about that some of the circle coming in from behind and whether they get challenged. They did get pinged quite a lot in that game. And when you look at the stats for the seven stars side, when they're getting it into the circle for Siggy Berg, she's only missed one shot. She's 12 from 13. So she, when she gets a supply in there, it's, it's really open. It's the work they do out of the front. And these little adjustments in goal for goal games like this, talking to the umpires matters. Yeah, so down the other end with Paige Reed and Lois Pearson. Hey, uh, Lois Pearson on seven from seven. So, you know, we talked about the isolation of, of Jazz Brown being pulled out of the circle with Paige Reed. It's just really opening up that baseline for her. Paige from nine from 11. So it's not a bad stat. I think the problem is the two she missed real crucial opportunities were real opportunities for Thunder to put their foot down so it's a three goal lead to the away side the yellow dresses of Manchester Thunder Karen Gregg leading Joe Tripp side by 16 goals to 13 we'll scan across the court and see if there's any changes with our naked eye well straight away in that shooting circle the defensive end for seven stars. They put Joe Tripp back to goalkeeper and Ella Powell Davis, the Welsh international to goal defence. I'm not surprised at all. We talked about the matchups. It wasn't playing into Jazz Brown's strength and you've either got to trust your structure or bring someone else onto the court. So the first changes have been done by Joe Tripp. And what is, all the players talk about the positive supportive environment that she's created took the head roll in about july 2022 didn't she joe trip won just the three games in 2022 then stars picked up and won seven last year finishing six in the super league table well she's had a clear structure and vision of how she's wanted to play and she's designed it around the strengths that she brings and the strength she coached and that's so important you know and then she's gone and found the players that can play that way as well They've become a real bed of talent for bringing players through and giving players opportunity. You know, Ziggy Berger's having the best season I think I've ever seen her play off the back of last year as well. And that connection with her and Jess Shaw. And she's given opportunity to players. Gabby Marshall's thrived since she's been here. And the statistics show it, don't they? In that win against Team Bath, they won pickups, gains, rebounds, feeds, way less unforced errors. A happy team at the moment. But they've got a four goal deficit to pull back against Manchester Thunder said it wasn't even just the defensive end it was the attacking end as well and it's all stemming from the pressure that Thunder are putting on on this first phase center pass they're so tough to get out from when they're doing a sort of three over Imogen Allison and Amy Carter cover so much ground Shadine van der Merwe she's literally taking Susie Livingston out of the game for periods of time keeps them up court and it allows the intercept big opportunity for Thunder here Oh, quick shot there of Laura Malcolm, of course, the ex-captain of Manchester Thunder, technical support coach this year. We've got Rachel Dunn on one bench, Laura Malcolm, you former netballers. <laughs> you know, we know what you're talking about. We love to see it, it's right? It's almost like they know what they're doing, right? Exactly. We know you know your stuff. There she is. Yeah, and I think... What um, an opportunity, though, right, yeah, for both of them. Huge opportunity. And she's, you know, she's one of the, the players that has, has been at Thunder for such a long time. She had that short spell, didn't she, overseas and at seven stars, but... She's a Thunder girl and she's done an incredible job up there and to actually go back 
be coaching to them, working the pathway, and then to get the senior opportunity. It can be relevant. I mean, that's, that's what the players want. They want players that have played at that level and understand the game. And between Greggy and Laura Malcolm, you've got a formidable team. We played ball. That was first and just tried to get away with that. Probably the first mistake she's made in this game so far. And that's a much better drive out from seven stars. I think because of the, the nature of the turnover, it was a live turnover, they got off really quickly. Thunder weren't able to set up. Just have a look at this centre pass. They've gone for a two-on-one this time. Much better from the stars attack. Susie Liversidge coming up the court to take that first phase. And that's the kind of thing they've got to do more of. And it's hard, you know, when you're a gesture and you really want to get out of the line, a bit like in that Metcalf. Sometimes you have to take a bit of a back seat, let your goal attacks do some work. And open up the game in a different way. No, four apiece in this quarter. There was a moment there, wasn't there, where Thunder was starting to pull away a little bit, but seven stars have come back into it. Still three the difference. Shot from Lewis Pearson because she did think about passing. <laughs> that Metcalf gave a bit of a wry smile because she definitely called her. There's a here if you need moment. Oh, Josie Huckle saw it. And that was so good from Seven Stars. Liversidge going forward to take her back. I feel you've got to do that a bit more, a bit more change of direction on, the, on this team, a bit more prep. It's the kind of goal that lifts everyone as well. What a ball flying towards his hands in that one, but he knew exactly where it was going to go and it landed perfectly. I had total trust that Matt Metcalf was going to catch that. I think the point was it was the only ball that was on. And that was much better from Stars, keeping this unit wider and deeper. Jay Tripp just having a chat with the umpire. I don't think she was too impressed with that call. Agreed with that one. <laughs> just, just a big twig there. Said to pass them seven stars, 18 22. Another sold out Super League game here at the University of Worcester, and quite rightly so. And we're frustrated that Rach Don hands on her head. I've seen that look many times. <laughs> I can never look at Rachel Dunn and forget the We Want Dunn chance <laughs> back in 2019 Netball World Cup. Every single time I see her. You see that. I see the towel on the head and the hands in the head moments. <laughs> she had a point, though. I'm not sure who it came off, but Thunder take full advantage of it. You just feel a little bit like that's where the momentum's at at the moment, isn't it? Looking across to the Thunder bench, we saw a glimpse of it there. Cool as you like from Karen Gregg so far. You can see this positional switch though has helped with Joe Tripp going back to keep up. Paige Reed just not having the same opportunity to exit in the space she wants. Neve Cooper doing a great job dropping back onto it as well. So they have decided to slow it down using that edge. And that's the three over I'm talking about. What I'm gobsmacked at is that that's how they won the ball for the first couple. And then they went back to a two on one and then a one on one. And they've gone back to a three over and they've just won the ball again. I'm not I'm not sure why they haven't just been relentless with that three over because stars have been really, really struggling with it. Oh, no chance Joe Tripp wasn't collecting that one. And getting her side back underway. Sure again. Take from Sydney Berger. And she's on, she's on. When she's got those shooting shoes on, the South African is deadly and pops another one in. Well, her angle's a lot better in this quarter. She was getting caught flat before with Josie Huckle behind, but she's managed to swing that back leg behind. It's real technical stuff, but it makes such a difference in these games. These are the kind of information you need from your coaches, just tweaks to what you can add. So tactically, you can open it up. And it's just meant she's got a side position on Huckle now. So the ball is going in a lot freer, and there's less challenge. Smart play from Reed, just pulling the contact from Powell Davis, not even looking to the shot, looking straight to the umpire, saying you're going to make a decision. That's experience. And there's the three over again. It just slows them up for a passage of play. 
Imogen Allison so active in it. She might put that one up. Well, it was costly by not, wasn't it? I'm surprised she didn't use the swing on the open side. I think she felt they were hunting, but she went back to the line. And Shaleen Van Der just put her hands up there, apologising to Matt, Matt Metcalf. She wasn't expecting it. Cut and drive play from Jessho, and that was better from Liverpool. She just needs to keep her feet down, make a decision. A two on one. <laughs> and the and Josie Huckle, but who needs to do that when you can just lob it in from the third line? What a ball! Straight into Siggy Berger. Feel that's what they've got to do more of. Look as soon as they enter into that end third, let some more ball go, take a bit of a risk on it. It's interesting, Kath, because we're looking at the stats before the game, and with all the defensive pressure that both these sides have, they're so good in a unit. There's no real standouts individually in terms of, you know, you don't have your Fumi Fidojus or your, you know, Vicky Solas that are intercepting loads of ball. It's a real joint effort. I don't think there's any stars defence in the top ten at the moment with intercepts or gains. And Shaleen van der Merwe and Josie Huckle are sitting at fifth and sixth in those kind of stats. So you sort of get the, the message that it's a whole team pressure. It's this kind of unit that Thunder is stepping up now. Which is why one-on-one -on -one you've got to isolate them a bit more. Josie Huckle being pinged on that one. Karen Gregg said it, didn't she, after the Sirens win. She said, you know, we've nailed down some structures and principles in that Sirens win. We're building the connections, and it's just flowing now nicely as we start this 2024 season, as you'd expect from Manchester Thunder, the ever-present at the top of the Super League table, table, and they're leading by five with five minutes to go until half-time. In with this, you can hear the bench shouting for the short pass. Do you see the difference now? They're doubling on that second player on the edge, so they can't actually get a swing away. So it's a really smart move. Oh, Amy Carter in a little bit of a sandwich there, wasn't she, in that centre position? Thunder will have to address that. And there's a long ball again, and this is what you want to see more of from Stars because it's landing. Siggy Bagger is so good on the take. Just a confidence piece as well. When that ball starts going in, Josie Hocken has to do different things. Then it really starts opening up. There we go. That's why stars have been so adamant about shutting down the swing, but not being able to land it this time. Paige Reed calling about the, bar the arm around her waist. Wasn't seen. It's a great turnover and steal from Seven Stars. <laughs> oh, Josie Hockle from one end to another on both keepers. I think that is the also, also the problem with Stars when they don't want to give Liversidge the ball for a shooting position. Oh, she looked at Jess Shaw then with Ziggy Berger. Thunder are hoping this results in a goal. Josie Hockle having a nice little chit-chat with the Thunder bench there. A little thumbs up because it does result in Thunder's 28th goal. Well, she needed that one as well because this one-on-one -on -one stuff, she's not getting anywhere near. But when Van der Merwe's dropped in on this double, as you can see, they're far more effective. She has time to move around. And then it just gets so tight in the circle. Look at that switch. That was brilliant from Van der Merwe and Hockle. That's why you've got to get quick ball in the circle, because if you allow them to work like that, you're in trouble. See movement in the back of the shot. And a goal attack bib coming out for seven stars with two and a half minutes to go until half time. Well, they'll be frustrated with that, won't they? Because they had an opportunity, five goals down, to 
to steal that one, get Barrett back in the game. And that was blown out to seven again. So I'm not surprised. You can't wait until half time. Get Radaman on the court at goal attack. Just give her an opportunity to run a couple of minutes out. And there it is. There's that goal attack change from Joe Tripp. Lefebvre Radaman then, previously of Cardiff Dragons, back wonderfully well from one of those horrible ACL injuries. Getting, as Townsend says, a couple of minutes of the second quarter under a belt. Straight in the thick of it, on the back line. Another South African in terms of international colours night here tonight. Absolutely, and of course playing against Shadeen van der Merwe as well. <laughs> international <laughs> so partner. So, Brilliant. But, I mean, but for that point, you, you know them. You know, you know that player inside out, and actually she matches up really well and she did her speed, her change of direction. I think it was what was needed. It was the last three ball stars have thrown away is into that circle. And it was with the movement between Siggy and Susie Liversidge. So a welcome change, I think, at this point to make sure they're going to half time at least in touching distance. Yeah, it's a 14-10 quarter this to Manchester Thunder. And that goal difference of three at the end of the first quarter, Townsend said, is now stretching out to eight but on their center pass then seven stars they got the home crowd behind them the league leaders on goal difference coming into this first match of round four still plenty of time to go yeah, absolutely I'm sure it still be with twists and turns and a great little settle ever out of them there and the difference where they're quite comfortable to go to shot That'll mean Shadeen will have to come off Siggy Berger earlier, which will start to isolate that one-on-one -on -one more. And he's pick and hold off from Lois Pearson. She's just so smart. She has perfect timing to hold off the player and then come round for the ball. She always makes it look easy, Lois Pearson. She doesn't always get the accolades she deserves. Another one of the Thunder Talent Pathway players. She played all 20 games last year for Manchester Thunder through the regular season into the semi and the grand final weekend. Still 10 seconds to go. 25, 30, 3. Yeah, good ending for Thunder, that one. Real quick goal. Gives them a comfortable lead at half time. Well, it is a comfortable lead, isn't it, Tamsin, for Manchester Thunder? Exactly what Karen Gregg and her staff would have wanted. You can see them on the right-hand side of his shot there in the bright yellow. But why has it been so comfortable for them, Tamsin, particularly in that second quarter? Now they've stretched their lead to eight when it was three. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think they've had to adjust in the shooting circle. They recognised the, the pressure, especially, that Stars were putting on that swing ball, so they couldn't open it up so much there. So the change and adjusted where Lois Pearson's coming into the court has been, has been brilliant to really open up that circle. And defensively, they've done a really good job on a shutdown two on one. Well, Zara Buck is courtside with Nat Metcalf, the captain of Manchester Thunder. Nat, a very strong start for, Thund for Thunder, very slick in attack. How would you assess that first half? <laughs> Tested this one, one and two, just you know, a few in it. What needs to be looked at in this half time break for stars? Uh, I think we're just getting a little bit hesitant on the ball, myself included. I think we're looking at options, not quite giving it on the first second and then still giving the ball. So, uh, yeah, we just need to mix up an attack. I thought the February into the game brilliantly then and we started moving the ball a bit quicker. So, we'll more time the first time stars have been down this season, what will Joe Tripp be saying in the change room, do you think? I'm not sure, I'm not in the changing room right now, I'm doing an interview with you. Um, I think just taking care of our own possession, obviously it's easily said than done, but we've got the same set of passes as they do, so just taking those to goal, we know Thunder are a great side, but I think we can fight back in the second half and really make a performance out of it. All the best in the second half, Gabby. 
Well, we've got a dance routine from the centre court here at the University of Worcester Arena. It is really loud here tonight. But what I did pick up from what the captains were saying, Tamsin, especially there from Gabby Marshall, she said, look, we've got to mix it up in attack. Yeah, they have. We talked about when they get predictable in the first quarter. They only had that exit, that opening from Ziggy Berger, and it was all so clogged at the top of the circle. I think they found more variety in the second, actually. Ironically, they were looking to Ziggy Berger earlier. She had a much stronger angle. She held it. But they weren't doing it consistently through the 15 minutes, and a lot of that was the work rate out of the front. Whether they were breaking open the three over on the centre pass, if they couldn't do that, they were struggling then how to build it. The work rate of the goal attack particular in this unit is huge and I think that's why we saw the impact and change of Radovan. Let's talk about the start then that both of these teams have had to the 2024 Super League season. If we take Manchester Thunder, we talk about them being the four-time winners, they last won it in 2022, but the good wins that they've had over Pulse, Dragons and Sirens, what's impressed you so far from what Manchester Thunder and Karen Gregg have been doing? I think their opening weekend was pretty impressive. You know, Pulse went on their finest form, but it was still a, a good win, 56-40. And I think what surprised us is we all expected to see Van der Berg start in the goal shooter position. And that was going to be target shooter, lob the ball in, Nat Metcalf in her element. And they didn't come out and do that. They started with Paige Reed. Um, they started with Lois Pearson, and they built this sort of rotating circle that you've seen is really comfortable. The shuffle shots the use of the edge, the early exits, the one-twos, and of course the screens off in the circle. That, to be able to do that, and then play with a target shooter, and we've seen Van der Bell sort of been brought into the games in the last few weeks, start to get uh, stronger sort of connections. It's two completely different styles. You have to understand how difficult that can be for, for your feeders to switch onto that, and yet the likes of Matt Carf and Amy Carter have done it seamlessly. And in terms of personnel that they've brought in and the changes that they've had, we've talked about Imogen Allison, of course, but they always just seem so solid. It's Manchester Thunder, they do what it says on the tin. Do you know what I mean? They're just always reliable in terms of turning up with solid combinations and depth. Yeah, and finding the players that work for you. Like, I'm, I'm sure Josie Huckle won't mind me saying this. I worked with Josie Huckle for a long time at Storm and Wasp, but she was never our starting goalkeeper. And, and actually, she's found a team now that completely complements her style, and that's, re that's really important. And I think you're... You really, you're right, just as I was saying about Joe Tripp and Seven Stars, Karen Gregg's created a, a, a thunder way, a structural way, a way that they want to play the game. And so what happens is your pathway players, like your Lois Pearsons, come through. Your Amy Carter's come through understanding what it looks like and what that means. And then you can tweak, adjust, and adapt. And it's so much easier to tweak, adjust, and adapt than it is to start from scratch every year. And you have to remember, because they're so successful, they get their pick and choice of, of who they want to bring into the squad as well. You know, they're not begging people to go to Manchester Thunder. And Karen Gregg with a 20-year plus of association it's just another branch of a tree that just always keeps producing what about seven stars then we talked about this transition joe trip came in in july of 2022 they were good last season they're better this year they've had a, a few personnel changes five or six players in this year what's impressed you the most about the wins they've had over rhino sirens and team bar well well look they, they were solid it's hard sometimes when you're playing some of the teams towards the bottom that you, you don't stick on task, that you can literally, you know, you can fall apart on the seams, you can have sloppy quarters. They haven't done that. They started well at opening weekend. They've consistently done that. They've put big scores on the board. And I think they've stayed strictly. This is their first test today against the Manchester Thunder side. And what I'm impressed with so far is although they've, the, you know, the, the score started to drift away. It hasn't. Eight goals is, is easily pulled back. But I mean, what they've done is they've changed and adapted. I can see tactically what they're trying to do in each quarter. And they will learn heaps from this game tonight about playing one of those top four sides and understanding how you consistently keep going throughout the whole game. And in terms of tonight, this is the first round of ra first game, excuse me, of round number four in the Super League. Also starting off at half past seven this evening was Team Bath and London Pulse. London Pulse looking for their third win of the season. And they're currently leading Team Bath by 37 goals to 23. Tomorrow, Rhinos take on Sirens in Huddersfield at three o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Both of those sides are looking for their first win. Storm and Dragons also tomorrow on a six o'clock centre pass. And then Sunday completes round number four when Mavericks take on Loughborough Lightning, who are third in the league, the defending champions, on Sunday at four o'clock. But here at the University of Worcester Arena, very shortly we'll be welcoming out both sides back onto the court. And myself and Tamsin, while we have been chatting, have had half an eye on our dance routine thinking, I'd do that 15, 20, <laughs> maybe 25 years ago as the as players come back out. <laughs> I do. 
Really? Really? Is that what we're doing? I'm not <laughs> dancing for you, Kathy. You're not going to start throwing me around. It's no, not happening. I'm not going to throw her around. <laughs> but you saw Nat Metcalf then back out courtside here. A few more of the players warming up as well. Are we expecting any more changes? Or when's the first dice going to be rolled by Karen Gregg? Yeah, well, I, d I don't think... I don't think Thunder necessarily need to change anything. They'll probably look at impacting Van der Berg into the circle because that will totally mix things up um, and it will start to give them a target, something to, to think about. I think stars are going to have to change something. I think they're going to have to continue to look in down that attack and they've given Radaman the opportunity in the goal attack. I think defensively you'll probably see a change again because they didn't win as much ball as they wanted to. So although they shut down the exit of Page Reed, they weren't able to stop the swings and the and the screens off. So you're gonna have to look at something different there as well. Well, Zara asked Gabby Marshall, didn't she? The captain of Seven Stars, look, what will Joe Tripp be saying? And quite rightly she said, well, I don't know at the moment because I'm <laughs> talking to you. But what would be her key message? What Joe's key message gonna be? Well, I think in the attack end, looking looking earlier into Ziggy Berger has been it's got to be vital. You know, they've they've shown from distance if they put that early ball in, Josie Huckle's not getting onto that. It's it's the tightest stuff. It's when they're allowed to go uh, uh, two on one in the circle. Radaman, I think, will have instruct uh, sort of instruction, strict instructions about her role and how she's going to open up Shadeen van der Merwe because Susie Liversidge was definitely getting lost in there, and they will definitely have looked at how they open up that under three over center pass and that might be as simple as going just go back door for a while just literally play the wing defense and, and, and goal defense through and try and open that up and go over their head so i think they'll they'll be focused very much on that attack and defensively they are so experienced they'll just look at a few tweaks of, of um of how they kind of start to look at winning some more ball in and around that circle and we were saying how comfortable Paige reed has settled in to that unit at, at Manchester Thunder. It seems to have given her a real, a real boost in that shooting role now. Yeah, well, she's just become more and more confident in the last couple of seasons, hasn't she, and really taken ownership of her way of playing. And I think that's really important. They haven't shied away from that. They've gone, okay, well, what, what are your strengths here? What can we add to our sort of repertoire? What can we add to this, this squad and this culture? Well, that rotation, we know we've got two of the best ball players in the league out in front of you with the uh, Amy Carters, your Nat Metcalves, and your Lois Pearson. So tell you what, we'll have you on the move. We'll do some one-twos and see how that opens up. Remember, this is a team that we're used to playing with, like an El Carbwell, understanding how to use a body, understanding how to open out the circle. So they'll be very assured of how to put that ball in. What's the environment like, Tamsin? You've been there, you're bubbling. You're at the top or second place of the Super League. You're moving along nicely. The confidence that must just grow week in week out not just because of a win but because of the combinations and, and solidifying those combinations yeah i think when you're a thunder side there's very little doubt in what you're doing I, I think you know you are you're constantly having these kind of conversations with each other you're understanding what to do you trust people you turn you know you're lois pearson right you have a look to your left and oh there's nat metcalf and you look down the court and oh imogen allison's bringing it down like you've got no fear you've got nothing to worry about that's why people are able to slot in Stars are still building that. There will be elements of doubt in there, not much, because they're having a, a really good season. It'll be the first season where they're like, we can actually do that, do this. And if they take what the, the positive impact they've already had in this game and what they can do with that, it will, regardless of the result tonight, they will learn a hell of a lot as they head into the rest of the season. Well, they're learning all the time, seven stars, and they're enjoying at the moment being top of the Super League but they've got a little bit of work to do here. 33-25 as we go into the third quarter. Smiles all around between Imogen Allison and Paige Reed. Nat Metcalf always steering the ship of Manchester Thunder. So super halftime entertainment, but now we rock and roll with quarter number three. Seven stars against Manchester Thunder then. 35 Super League wins is what seven stars have had since they joined us in the Super League in 2017. Joe Tripp has got a turnover at the moment, an eight goal deficit to make that 36. See the flags in the back of the shot there. Celebrating our international colors, as we've mentioned. And Louise Travis and Rachel Radford then will bring the ball back on court. They'll hand it over and seven stars with the center pass for quarter number three. See already they've had to go back backwards seven stars but it didn't look planned you see the impact changes ash decker into the middle early feed into radaman betsy creek coming into goal shooter so it's only jess shaw that remains in that attacking lineup from the first half 
Gavin Marshall's been pushed back to wing defence, and of course you've seen Jazz Brown come back on at goalkeeper. So a heap of changes for the seven stars side. And as we talked about at half-time, not really surprised. They needed to do something different. <laughs> Smart. Two, three, <laughs> Reed, Metcalf, you to me. <laughs> Got the desired result there, right? I think the, the key to that was the timing. She didn't just lob it in and out. She waited to get Joe Trip off her body, use it against her. And look at the difference with that drive from Radaman and actually driving into the circle, wanting the ball going in. Jess Shaw, that's the first real let loose we've seen from her. Just be braver. Deja vu with a little drop to the floor. We don't need to change it at the minute. Thunder, it's working for them. Oh, Imogen Allison. That was such a good take. The difference this time, Radaman getting the first phase, giving the driving ball to Jess Short. I think that's the first backspace ball we've seen into the Thunder Circle. This second to the third quarter to do it. being pulled for the screens. She was trying to pick off Jazz Brown and Joe Tripp. The ball wasn't moving quick enough for her to do that, so she got just stuck in no man's land. Josie Huckle, smart with that one, sticks her arm out. So you can already see the pace that Seven Stars are now trying to play in the tack end, the changes that have brought that about, but with it, it's got to be the element of control and making sure you still have two options. Great strength from Paige Reed. Shot the challenge from Jazz Brown really well. And just the way Lois Pearson and Page Reed use their bodies when they're in the circle, getting across the players. There's a the three over that I'm talking about. A much better cutback from Radovan, not just taking it long and hard. A lovely feed in from Ash Decker to Betsy Creek. Oh, that's such a big ball from Nat Metcalf. Such good control from Lois Pearson and that baseline drive from her. The timing has been spot on. A little excitement, understandably, on. The Thunder bench, 5-3 lead in this third quarter. Radovan. She's been good on the shot, hasn't she, since she's entered the game. Not phased at all. She's such a good player, Radovan. Obviously working her way back into this squad. Great to see the South African back on court. I think she gives you a bit of everything. Yeah. You know, she she play makes, she has the speed, and she'll shoot. I think given that opportunity, just to get back to sort of full match consistency in terms of not not giving away as much ball. Look at that cut back. She's so good. Inside, 
So a rocking and rolling between Creek and Huckle. Let's see Creek, another new name to seven stars this season. Rather than as smooth as you like. For our new shooters watching, what does she do so well that makes Tamsin Greenway smile? She practices. <laughs> no, she's you have got to practice. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's where I'm letting myself I down to. No, she's got she's got a really high release because she's not she's not the biggest goal attack around, but she's got really high release. Um, she's completely focused on going to the post as well. I know that sounds ridiculous, but she doesn't fake a lot in terms of she doesn't look edgy. She's quite happy. She uses it as a control, but it's the movement to get her into position. So she goes into the circle with intent to shoot. And that sounds ridiculous, right? But as a goal attack, when I used to play, didn't want to shoot, so I would go into the circle to draw space. And when you come in with intent. You actually want to put up the ball at the end of it. You know, the amount of times you see shooters take it in a weird position and then don't want to put the ball up. But she goes in there as a cut and drive kind of goal attack. And now a teammate, Betsy Creek, playing her part as well. Forty thirty-one, nine goal lead for Manchester Thunder. From Lois Pearson in out, up to the post, and now Thunder is starting to open up that swing again. You're seeing they go from wide to wide, and they're quite happy. Nat Metcalf pinging that ball from one side of the court to the other, and then doing the same on the swing. It's a good hold off from Betsy Creek. Nice pressure from Huckle. Decker looking at the umpire, then looking at Radaman. Radaman wanted the ball straight to chess. And difference with stars at the minute, they're using the swing as a, of a panic swing. There's nothing else on. Thunder are using it on purpose to really open up the space. So you can see that Metcalf here, she's just deciding what's happening already. Using the swing to open it and <laughs> see the difference. They know exactly why they're doing it and what they're doing it for. Great play, Pedri doing all the work at the front to hold off. Lois Pearson just effortlessly slotting in to the back space. Going about a business very nicely. Shot. There hasn't been many. She gets that one back. I just can't understand how she's being allowed so much front space in that circle. You'd think that they just need to take the chances and stand in front. Six minutes 17. Left 31 43. Radaman out the circle. Sure, again, always looking for options. The wing attack for seven stars. Nice rolled in by Betsy Creek. Calm as you like, Metcalf recycling back to the line. Nothing coming forward in the circle. There's the long swing over and the open out. You can see where the ball is going before it's gone, but they're so good in terms of the timing. Just opens it up and back at Airy coming into goal defence. On to play coach Joe Tripp. Tripp takes a trip to the bench after a good solid effort with five minutes to go of quarter three. I just feel Taking Ziggy Berger off has kind of lost that impact of going into the circle, hasn't it? And it's not, you know, Betsy Creek's strength isn't to just stand and hold on that one-on-one. -on -one. You want to see her exit a little bit more. I haven't really seen the change in structural, tactical that you think she'd come on and implement. You have to remember, Ziggy Berger had only missed one before she went off the court. Still been the main shooter. 
and he's breaking Lothar. Yeah, and shooting, as we mentioned, at 92% this season before this match was on 121 goals. But sitting cross-legged at the moment, watching her side try and chase a 13-goal deficit. And she's on 22 goals from 23 before she went to the bench. Just seemed a strange decision to do it that soon when there were only eight goals down coming into the second half. You thought he would have left it for a few more minutes. With the impact especially of Ash Decker in at the middle. Comfortable and relaxed, Siggy Berger, watching the side on your sideline. A couple more stats for Dean van der Merver in the first half. Four deflections, two games, an intercept. Hopper going well with three intercepts in three games. There's a level of control now, isn't there, Tamsin, over this Manchester Thunder side? Well, this is business as usual, and just as you were reading out the defence stats, Amy Carter thought she'd get added to the list. Great she smother <laughs> from her big arms over. And again, the experience of, of Alison and Carter on, on stuff like that, just the jump of the ball, such a simple skill. The utiliser at the right timing can be lethal against teams. They are just playing around with this ball for fun now, aren't they? They've got so many options. They just run the same lines. Lois Pearson going through the baseline. How they're able to get this ball so easily to the backup stars will be not happy about that. There's your one twos. There's your swing. And there's your pop. I wonder what they've been doing at training. Yeah. Karen Gregg watching on. Yeah. She overcut that one, Paige Reed. Yeah. Big turnaround cap this bit. But Gabby Marshall hunting in that centre third in that wing D position. Radman in the corner pocket, looking for options, finds it with Short. That was a better opening, wasn't it? A quicker swing from Decker to Shaw to open up Betsy Creek. And you can see moments of what they're trying to do, sort of emulating what Thunder are doing down the other end, but doesn't always work. If you haven't had the time and the tactical play out there, which I'm sure just getting sucked into that from Josie Huckle, great play from the goalkeeper. She's had her hands in everything this evening. She did, a little shout out as well. One of those netball licks that we saw on social media recently as Jazz Brown gets involved in the goalkeeper position for seven stars. Huckle shouting, I'm here if needed. <laughs> Nat Metcalf, I think that was her netball in Ick actually. She, players shouting that. But she obliged and gave it back to Huckle, went down the other end. Jazz Brown then sends it on its way and it does then convert for a seven stars goal. It's taken us a good 43 minutes to see a fly from Jazz Brown, who would usually be out hunting so early. And that is credit to what the Thunder attack end have done, but also the lack of structure that they've, been able to, they've not been able to slow it down. You said to me at the start of the game what they've got to do. They had to stop the short, sharp ball. They haven't been able to do that, which is why they've not been able to play as they want to play defensively. Oh, a ripple of applause from those supporting Manchester Thunderside. And a sell out home match, of course, it's seven stars with the loudest noise with a minute to go. <laughs> Gabby Marshall, Shaleen van der Merwe showing a little joke as the ball flies away. Nicely done by Betsy Creek. <laughs> that was a rapid shot, wasn't it? I was looking at the clock, I was like, I don't think we've got... <laughs> Still got time. She got it away. Contact goalkeeper. The contact needs to change. In the back. Goal attack. Bounty up. Obstruction. Goal defense. Just get into position so quickly, don't they? And that's what you have to take note from Thunder. They execute the technical skills relentlessly. Got to go quickly. They've got a shot, they've got an opportunity. Radman with the ball on the buzzer. 
take it to 36. Well, disappointment for the crowd at the end of the third quarter. The seven stars now 14 behind with Manchester London knocking on the door of the half century with 15 minutes to go. 49-35, a 16-10 quarter. Manchester Thunder, and as we said a couple of times in that quarter towns, and it's now just a little bit of cruise control from Karen Gregg's side, isn't it? Yeah, you felt that from the momentum in the first half. They weren't able to quite put their foot down on seven stars due to the quality of the star side, and you know they weren't going anywhere. I, I think that's certainly helped Thunder with the changes for, for why the score started to really tick on. That was Star's lowest quarter score in that one, only 10 goals on the board, and it was noticeable with, with the exit. Of it was noticeable with the exit of Ziggy Berger, who's still sitting on the bench as the chats are being had. There's the Manchester Thunder bench. Gabby Marshall taking instructions from head coach Joe Tripp. But as you said, T, this, this is their biggest game of the season so far. Yes, they've had the wins against Rhino, Sirens and Team Bar, and no disrespect to those teams at all. But Manchester Thunder, at this moment in time and in previous seasons, are a different opposition, aren't they? So this is the biggest game they've had this season. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the biggest game they've had in the position they've been in ever. You know, you're coming into a... Uh, a league this year, look, the hardest thing ever to do is to back up a season, right? So last season, they kind of took players by uh, teams by surprise. They were that sort of underdog that everyone got on the back and supported. They've now had to go and back it up this year. So teams like Thunder will have done their homework on them this year. They wouldn't have come into this game going, yeah, we can probably try a few combos and see. They've come in and actually had to shut them down and work them out. And, and they've done that this evening. And the, the best teams then go away and go, right, where are we exposed? What do we work on? Which is why I said they would have learned a lot. And you'd rather get found out early by a Thunder side than get found out in a few weeks by one of those mid-table kind of teams that are also pushing for top four. Well, in terms of where both these to teams go next, folks, away the seven stars to London Pulse. I mean, that'll be a good game for them, won't it? Yes. See how quickly they Just work. thinking about what you've just said. They're going away to London Pulse. Then they play Dragons. Then they play Mavs. They're not home again here until round eight against Surrey Storm. So a couple of big back-to-back -back games for Seven Stars. And as you mentioned, for Joe Tripp to learn a lot from today and take it forward against Sam Bird's side. But well, this is why I always bore people to death with my structure talk. It's so important, right, because... You don't just suddenly change your game totally for Thunder and then change your game to Pulse. What you look at for next week now is going, right, where are we exposed? What will Pulse likely do to us? But in what way are they going to do that? How do we still keep our attack end open? How do we get more direct ball into Ziggy? That's how we win. But next week, we've got to do it against Afumi Fadojo and Halima Adio. Like, so it becomes a slight tweak here and there for the things that you're trying to, trying to do. And that's where Thunder are so good because they they have a way of their playing and they will literally just tweak a position or a, a sort of tactic in that style. And in terms of Manchester Thunder, well next they're at home against Surrey Storm. That's a rematch of the third, fourth place battle of last year, which Manchester Thunder won. And their next three home matches, or well, their next three matches are at home in a row. So a little bit of a momentum builder possibly for Karen Gregg and her side. International Women's Day uh, announcer here at the University of Worcester Arena reminding everybody it's International Women's Day. They're celebrating international colours here in Worcester. And a nice roar from the home side as we head into the final 15 minutes of that one. See Ash Decker applauding the fans for their support here this evening. But Manchester Thunder then get us underway for the fourth and final quarter. Yeah, and there's quite a few changes on the Thunder side. They've emptied their bench out now, so you can see Van der Beer in the circle. Paige Reid has gone from goal shooter to goal attack. Lois Pearson shifts across to, to wing attack. Nat Metcalf getting a rest on the bench. And down the other end, Taylor McEvitt. You're going to see her in shot at wing defence. So Imogen Allison goes to the bench as well. And Ella McCormack in at goalkeeper for Josie Huckle, who I thought has been outstanding this evening. Oh, sorry, Thunder, throw in. Well, look at the Thunder bench in the back of the shot. Party time for Manchester Thunder on this Friday night. Oh, great change from Pearson into the backspace. You see those two on the bench. They've put in a shift this evening. 
<laughs> they have put in a shift. Oh, has has Nat Metcalf as well, but then she never does any different, so that's just normal. Good day, good day at the office again. 35.50 then. And you can see for seven stars, Ziggy Berger oh, back in the I fold. Very surprised by that change. And also, you want to end this quarter how you want to start next week against Paul. So getting her back on the court and allowing players to feed are really important. to shut down from seven stars. And you can see the change tactically in there with Van der on. They're happy to look a bit earlier. Paige Reed just, just discussing where she wants that ball. Spoke to Karen Gregg before the game and they said they're getting better and better at feeding her. Remember, they didn't really have her for re-season at all. They're using the season to build her in. The tall figure there, Tamsman saying the goal shooter Vanderberg. Six foot three. It's impressive at the Netball World Cup, wasn't she? Another South African on court when South African, well, six overall, weren't they? Yeah. Uganda beat them to the fifth place finish. But getting her opportunity in this final quarter tonight. That's a take from Ziggy Berger. I think that is where they've struggled tonight, Stars. Up until this point, they've been allowed to leave Siggy Berger in the circle where she's most dominant. She's had to exit a lot more than they'd have liked. And that's because of the work rate out the front and the shutdown from this Thunder defensive line. And lucky Jazz Brown, she read that well. Switch with Airy. Decker looking to put that ball in. Nice and early to Ziggy Berger, not afraid to put it in on the turn one. Needs a bit more height on it. Wing defence. Penalty, stars. Just sure down. That was a hit from Taylor McEvitt. Let's see it out of shot. already how much more direct they are Vanderbur in there again juggling away under all kinds of pressure but you kind of want to think you use this last 15 minutes of a bit of feeding practice take every opportunity you've got it's all right doing it in training but actually up against a different different unit different styles of play Vanderberg, she's got such a good aerial game hasn't she she talks about how fast she is how high she can jump how strong she is in the air yeah and she plays out of both. She'll play goal shooter and goal attack. Goal attack. I mean, everyone looked ridiculously offside then. <laughs> when the advantage breaking, they all ran off. <laughs> and how they got away with that. There's a three over shutdown, having to go back. Just surprised again, Stars haven't used the back option earlier. Oh, there's a beautiful quick ball in. I think that's why she was brought back on the court. Oh, Paige Reed steps one way, draws Jazz Brown, puts it in the other way. It was on one foot, so she had to get rid of it. Just felt that was coming. It was coming. I was like, Marshall's looking for options, but she's right. Like, who's coming? Who's <laughs> no one's into shot? 
kind of in the story of all evening. And, and look at that, the fresh legs of Thunder as well, being able to bring McEvitt into that line to run it at the front, McCormick at the back to do the same. Gabby Marshall unlucky not to pull that one in. That's a lovely feed. Totally unfazed going in for the Nine. rebound. Oh, it's Karen Gregg emptying the bench. Let's have a look. Changing the goal defence position. Yeah, Ella Bowen is going to come on to court. She came on, didn't she, against Sirens. And had a nice little impact. Ella Bowen now on court then against Seven Stars. Oh. Amy Carter didn't even flinch then. Just took the hit. Carried on playing. Comes out goal defence. Oh, there's instruction centre. Better play from seven stars. Yes, sure, just giving Ziggy Berg a bit more time, but she was so much deeper on the take. She wasn't playing up away from the circle. She was driving towards it. So much more comfortable as a wing attack when you get to do that. Oh, hit there from Gabby Marshall in the circle. Not allowed in that. <laughs> Sliding out. Well, she was trying to shut down the straight line ball from <laughs> Lois Pierce, and she's been lucky to be fair. She did she's get run she's shot not in. standing with her hands behind her back. That point. Nothing to see here. No, it wasn't me. <laughs> Understandably, one of the most popular players in the Super League and at oh. seven stars. That was nicely done, that wasn't it? Center. That got the Manchester Thunder team off the bench. Really did. Great vision from the young goalkeeper. Mm. She just sat there watching. She hedged the bet. She started to come out a little bit more with the work out the front from McEvitt as well and Amy Carter. And what was brilliant about that as well, you saw the bench all up on their feet, supporting supporting her, supporting that change. Advantage breaking, goal attack. Van der Berg again. Change. Oh, we've got a stars change. Looks like Shaw's going off. Goal attack. Yeah, so Susie, Susie Liversidge on back onto the court. She's come on for Jess Shaw. So at the start of the game at goal attack, she's moved to wing attack. Miss shut down out the front. Look at that work rate from Ella Bowen there. It's been the story all evening. They've been relentless working in that third line to run the Seven Stars attack line hard. Either keeping them back up the court with big arms over or just with no one to feed the ball to. You know, we talk tactically. You can see the difference. So when they had the, um, the rotating circle to start off with Thunder, how they broke the zone, right? How stars weren't able to sit in the box the difference now they've got a tall holding shooter in here and you've taken someone like a Metcalf off the court as well it's changed everything look how stars are able to get into the box so they've only got the big long feed on now and that's what I was saying about teams doing the homework and the best teams having tactical changes actual changes that will make an impact well right on cue Tamsin talking about tactical changes having an impact the goal attack position is changed by Karen Gregg. Yeah, it is. Paige Reed goes to the bench and Annie Williams comes on. Really talented young goal attack. Again, another Thunder Pathway recruit. Yeah, she's only a youngster. She's still 16. <laughs> she's young. She's young. Can't, yeah. Well, it's the first Super League contract, isn't it, with Manchester Thunder, a real rising star of the Thunder side. Yeah. 
And again, given an opportunity here this evening when our team are in a good position, there were 20 up, they're now 19 up. There's under five minutes remaining of this match. And the Manchester Thunder are going to find themselves on the top of the Super League after our Friday night netball with four out of four wins up to 12 points. Contact goalkeeper in, just right on the edge goal attack. Alaboa just bouncing around there. Ziggy Berger holding strong. And she has brought that stability back into the circle with a target. Oh, Gabby Marshall read that. Brave ball from Williams. That's what you like from the youngster just coming on, being fearless. I think that's what's really helpful about these kind of games. When you've got that lead, you can bring your youngsters on. You can bring your youngsters on and give them an opportunity where they are able to just play the ball around. Big shot over Jazz Brown. She steps it in. Oh, Becca Airy saw that. Oh, Jazz Brown. She picked that right off. And there's a better transition. We saw that in the early stages of this game. We just didn't see it enough from Seven Stars. When they break that Thunder unit, they've been flying down the court and isolating the one-on-one. -on -one. Contact, goal attack. So under three minutes remaining for the last lessons of this match to be learned by Joe Tripp and by Karen Gregg. Defence pressure again, just able to slot down, releasing the first phase, putting low space under all kinds of pressure. And look, this is the luxury I was talking about. You can change that bench up now. You can put an inexperienced attacking lineup on because they've got such a big lead. The only way you learn is getting out there. I think there was a proper little battle there going on there between McEvitt and Susie Liversidge, but it's actually Ella Bowen that's been called up for it. We're just ignoring that whole little incident. Pretend that never happened. And there's a good triangle baseline to top. Quick swinging in. The dramatics from Becca Harry work. <laughs> oh, I love it. Contact, grab, goal, attack, penalty, thunder. Oh, I've got an attacking contact both ends of the court now. Oh, nice quick ball from Amy Carter. She hasn't really done a lot of that in this this last 15 minutes, but that entry into the end third, then acres of space. Oh. Contact, goal, attack. <laughs> this whole time. Have we got yeah. a floor wiper? Becca Airy just runs that off. Oh, just a bit of an awkward fall there. Just a bit of a knock as she took the ball. Penalty's gone against Daniel Williams. Mm. Gabby Marshall's got the ball. Daniel Williams, incidentally, October 2006 born. So 16. Wow. Is that right? 17. 17. She just turns up. Yeah. 17. 17. Young. Yo exactly that. Young. <laughs> oh, young and very <laughs> talented. Ex extremely. Yeah. We're into the last minute then. The Manchester Thunder have a 14 goal lead and they're going to take the win. As mentioned in the first real test for Joe Tripp and her side in a season where the flown out the netballing blocks. They'll look towards that match against London Poles. Karen Gregg will look towards her home game against Surrey Storm. Okay. 
can tell you that London Pulse are heavily beating Team Bath as well, so they'll pick up their next win of the season. It's not been a pretty start, has it, for Team Bath? The early win against Sirens, but and a few heavy defeats. Let's see what the last passage of play is. Brenneman not able to nail that final shot, just like we ended the third quarter. Yes. She went for it. Not that it made any difference on that scoreline this evening. A comfortable win from Thunder in the end. It was Tamsin, wasn't it? It was pretty close after the first 15 minutes. Thunder leading by three, 16 goals to 13. But their Manchester Thunder just started to flow a little bit better meaning that they are now on top of the Super League. Four out of four for Karen Gregg's side. There'll be lessons learned by both teams and they'll head into their round five match. But tonight did belong to Manchester Thunder on the home court of Seven Stars. Very shortly, we'll hear from our player of the match and our two head coaches as well, who'll be on court side with Zara Buck. But there's the familiar huddle that we see in the Super League, led by both of the captains. And the biggest smiles are from Manchester Thunder, 65-51. Yeah, it was an impressive performance in the end, wasn't it? Getting all squad members out onto court as well. I mean, they were just so lethal on that defensive third line. That pressure from Imogen Allison, from Shadeen van der Merwe and from Amy Carter was relentless. Stars really struggled to get any depth or connection going into Ziggy Berger with enough sort of influence to, to close that gap. They weren't able to do that. And down the other end, the tactical play and the short, sharp one-twos were just way too much for Stars to handle, especially with their zone style. But still positive stuff from Joe Tripp's side. The best start they've ever had to a Super League season. Onwards and upwards for them. There they are on the left of the shot, still in their huddle. But the bright yellow of Manchester Thunder roll on with another win in the bag and Townsend alongside me has had the hard task of having to pick the player of the match if I look across there's at least two or three names on there Townsend that have impressed you here this evening and one of the ones in yellow have departed and broken away <laughs> from the bunch there we go <laughs> oh, there, was a, there was a couple of choices for me Lois Pearson was a near a near one down the attack end but it was a defensive pressure of Josie Huckle, who I thought was outstanding today. She got a hand into everything and her positional work was spot on. Well, she had her hand in everything. Her positional work was spot on and Tamsin's name, Josie Huckle, the player of the match. And Zara, you're courtside. Congratulations, Josie. A win on International Women's Day and player of the match. How did it feel out there today? I mean, what a better place to spend it with, with your teammates on International Women's Day. Um, it was, I think from us, we said our keyword today was dominant, and I think we proved that out there. Um, there's so much more from us. It's great to get all 12 on the court today. Um, I think we went out there, proved what we needed to prove, and I think we've come away with a really strong win today. You said dominance, you were relentless in defence and really shut down the Stars' attack at times, didn't you? Yeah, I think um, across the back four of us, I know Elliot's coming to the squad today, but Kez, me, Shad, Ella and Elia are working tirelessly at training. Um, and I think that we've got some really good structures. It's with Imo, Tay and Amy at the front as well. I think the four of us plus our whole through court, we're actually defending really well today. Well, that's four from four now in the season for Thunder. How much are you enjoying playing with this side? Oh, I'm absolutely loving it. I'm so glad Karen asked me to come back again. I know it was a bit of a weird year last year for me in terms of what's going down and then coming to Thunder. Um, but these guys have embraced me and I'm fully now Northern at heart. <laughs> well done, Josie. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank that you. is your medal. Oh, as Josie picks up her medal, she said that she's so glad okay, that let's Karen... Bring in Karen Gregg. Karen, oh, she's back. Manchester she's Karen's Thunder arrived. head coach. Oh. Congratulations, Karen. A perfect start for Thunder, really. I mean, how pleased are you of the performance tonight? I'm really, really proud of them. Like, you know, we've obviously watched Stars a lot over the last few weeks and they've put out some really solid performances. So we knew they were going to pose a real threat to us tonight. And we spent a lot of time looking at video and, and where we thought we could expose them. And I think the defensive pressure we, we put on from the very start, getting arms over, really starving them and putting um, doubt into the mind to throw the ball into Siggy, I thought was great. 
Um, and, and we just kind of turned the screw and put the pressure on. We were able then to start building and winning more balls. So, yeah, really proud of what they put out. It was a really strong performance from Thunder today. You made a lot of changes, brought all 12 out. How important is that to get all the players out on court and build on those connections and combos? Um, it's super important, you know, and, and I look at our squad this year and I go, we, we have got a 12, we've got a 15. Every single player is capable of stepping out onto that court and doing a job for us. So for them to be able to, you know, get on court and feel it. And yeah, there was, there was little blips in there, but they, they've got to feel what that feels like under, you know, immense pressure against a solid defence. So um, we build those combinations. We've got to know what players can do from the start. We've got to know what they can do when they're impacting. And, I think everybody made a really good account for themselves tonight. So Thunder, still the only team undefeated in the season. That's a pretty good feeling. And what will you be taking forward into this week ahead of round five? Yeah, I think for us, obviously, we, we want to win every game. You know, that, that's a real key thing for us. But the most important thing is that we take learnings from every single game and, and we go out there and it's a process. And the performance, if we put out a great performance, then hopefully the result takes care of itself. So. For us, we ignore that we're four from four. We, you know, we know that, and um, we've just got to keep asking more of ourselves in training this week. We know we've got a tough game against Storm next Friday night, and we, we've just got to make sure that we're following our same processes every single week and, and putting out a good performance. And hopefully, as I said, the results will follow. Thanks, Karen. Thank you. Okay, let's bring in Jo Tripp. She just embraces Karen on that on that win. But commiserations, Jo. First defeat this season. How much of a battle was it out there for Stars? Yeah, we knew it was going to be a huge battle from the start, and they've got a really different circle that we haven't kind of haven't come up against. You know, their speed and their connections were fantastic tonight, and we just we just weren't on, on par. You came off. Uh, Rebecca Airy came on as a player coach. How important is that to to take to the bench and assess the game at that yeah, point? Yeah, I think in, in this game. Um, it was just a matter of trialing different things. We haven't trialed a lot of things in other games previously. So for me, it was about seeing what people could come on and do and impact the game. Um, I was really impressed with the way players came on and off. I um, definitely think like, I made a lot of changes and that's really hard as a team to settle in and that's on me, but I'm um, also just wanting to see what girls could do today. Still early days in the season, but what were the struggles tonight? Um, I think for us, it was our sticking to structure. Um, I, I feel like we just came in really flat overall. Um, and we're kind of looking to each other to bring the energy rather than bringing that energy ourselves. Um, so that's just something we have to just look at each individually and make sure we bring that energy next week. Well, what will you be taking forward and work on this week? Um, our work on is just our footwork um, to get around Again, you know, looking at here to Pulse, they've got a tool shooter and a moving shooter. Um, so for us, it's just going going back to what we're really, really good at and demanding that of ourselves more and more. Um, you know, for us, it was a big step up. We knew it would be. Um, and yeah, just really excited to get another opportunity next week. Thank you. Well, thank you to Zara, thank you to Joe and to Karen, both the head coaches and our wonderful player of the match, Josie Huckle couple of things there that stood out for me Joe talking about you know we came tonight we were really flat is that a fair assessment and defensive pressure mentioned by Karen Gregg as well which was obviously obvious with the win that they had is that a fair assessment from both times in yeah I would say so I think Greggy um they they knew they had a plan you know even hearing Josie Huckle talk about how relentless they were going to be and what that was going to look like and and they did starve Siggy Berger from the ball for long periods of the game they got a bench at half time there was that edginess on the feed I've been calling for it all game to just let some ball go and and when they did that they looked far more confident so it's quite interesting that amount of doubt that experienced sides can put in your in your mind and I think that flatness for seven stars came from that tactical breakdown you know they were attacked in different ways she talked about not being not not have played against that kind of circle yet and they were you know it exposed them and this this is what top level is all about you know if you're gonna play a set style people are gonna come at you and and like i said the biggest part for them tonight is the learning they're not quite there yet they're absolutely not but it doesn't mean they can't be well, it ended with Manchester Thunder taking the win then against Seven Stars. They're sitting pretty on the top of the Super League 
as we go into round number four. Four from four and 100%. Thank you to Tamsin Greenway for being alongside me. We'll be taking a short break now, but do stay with us for the Off the Court podcast with Tamsin. She's got the special guests of Nat Metcalf and Jess Short with their attacking special. But tonight was all about the yellow dresses. It was all about Manchester Thunder showing everybody why they're four-time Super League champions.
welcome to Worcester Arena. We've just finished round four of the Super League. It was the home side Seven Stars versus Manchester Thunder. Top of the table clash so early on in the season. I'm joined here by Seven Stars wing attack Jess Shaw. This is, of course, a wing attack special. We're hoping that Nat Metcalf is going to join us in a second. Apparently, they're having a debrief, Jess. I'm not sure they needed one. No, I don't think they did with that <laughs> performance. <laughs> I hope we should be here soon. It was a pretty dominant performance in the end. Manchester Thunder winning 65-50. But we wanted to do an attacking special this week so I thought who better to get in than to my favorite wing attacks in the country at the moment sitting in first and third in the feeds in the statistics um, Jess wanted to talk to you about that wing attack position because I chatted to list goals earlier in the week and we sort of said it's one of those sort of underwhelming position the position that always gets looked over would you agree with that yeah I definitely agree I think um, a lot of wing attacks out there do a lot of work but I think it's just the unnoticed especially off the ball stuff because sometimes you're not always going to get the ball, but it's that kind of work that you do in the attack to pull the defence and then open up and the other midcourt or the shooters. Absolutely. Talk to me about some of the specifics then, because I think as a when you look at shooter, you can easily go, oh, it's the shooting stats. You know, you can go to post, how many attempts you get. Defensively, it's the intercepts, it's the gains, it's the deflections. But for wing attacks, it's not always that obvious. Obviously, there's the feeds, yeah. but there's a hell of a lot of movement that's going on and a lot of work off the ball as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, like like you said, a lot of work off the ball. And I think the early prep on centre pass, but also the connection that you have with the goal attack to kind of pull that defence apart, open up first phase and then that deep second phase um, and then straight into your shooters. But like you said, obviously, we look at our feeds, but it might not be, sorry, <laughs> it might not be the feeds, um, obviously always going in, but I think it's just the work and the triangles that you do to open up the circle. And then I think that's when it opens up the circle a lot more and then you can let that ball go a lot easier into the circle. But it's a work before that to then open up that. Well, I want to talk about those partnerships in particular because um, as a long-standing wing attack, I used to drag Rachel Dunn yeah. around the country with me to whatever yeah. club I was at. She was my uh, security blanket and she's on your bench now as well. So doing the work with the shooters, yeah. the shooting technical coach. But you've really begun a really solid partnership with South African international Ziggy Berger and you've almost brought her to life. Just talk to me a little bit about that partnership. Yeah, I think it's obviously great from last season and we continue to build that. And I think it's just her holding there. She's just always strong holding there. And then I just see that space and I just let the ball go. And I think it's just also watching to whether I give it on that first second or that third second. I think it's really key to mix it up to keep the defence guessing. Um, and I'm just excited to see what we can continue to do for the rest of the season. Explore a little bit more for me the one three seconds. It's a lot. I use that a lot in coaching. Yeah. Um, and what's so important about using that one to three seconds and the release? Yeah, I think because sometimes obviously the ball can go straight away and just turn and let it go because the defence heads down. But there's times where the defence are really on that. But if you turn away, kind of look somewhere else and then that third second back in because they've just kind of dropped their heads or they've gone to look for something else. So it's just having that composure on ball to not get scared to get done for three seconds, but just then confidence that Siggy's going to come free and then let that ball go. And that's something that's really noticeable about your game and also about Net Metcalfs, about how composed you stay and how focused you look on the circle is that something you work a lot in training because when we talk about seeing the options the temptation is you go from one to the other and don't come back to the circle yeah. but almost that understanding that Ziggy's going to be available yeah I think it's obviously the more confidence you do in training and obviously when things do get shut down obviously things will reopen because defense heads go down or they slack off a little bit for that second so I think it's just making sure you're calm on ball and actually controlled with it because then you can fake pull the defence and just let it go um, but sometimes I do get caught looking in the circle for a bit too long when I should have played back so <laughs> if you look calm on the ball you never get a hell ball yeah. that's, that's my job I want to talk a bit more about those tactical elements then we saw a thunder three over today so that three over of three defenders getting over the line and really shutting down that yeah. space I mean how hard is that to break free can you just give a bit of understanding of what that looks like yeah it's definitely hard but i guess we've been working in training on breaking that three over so we have someone attacking the middle but then someone attacking that same side to kind of pull either off the middle person or on that wide um or we can pull him as wide as we can and try and find the gaps which we did in the game at times but um also going back on a center pass if they do do that three over can we screen to then set up second phase if we get someone driving back on the backup so there's lots of different things out there, but I think it's just mixing it up and trying to see what we can do. I think we have that sort of textbook thing from a wing attacks, aren't we? They've got to feed, they've got to get out first phase, but we're seeing a lot of differences in the game. Actually, you and Nat Metcalf weren't the biggest high centre yeah. pass receives today, but that was on purpose, right? That was a tactical element. So as long yeah. as you're getting involved at some point in that second phase or at least driving into the third, are you happy with that? 
Yeah, I think I used to always be like, if I don't get first phase, I'm not Panic. doing. Yeah, I'm not doing good as a wing attack. But I think there's obviously four other people on that centre pass that can be available. And actually setting up deep second phase, especially when you have a shooter like Siggy, if you've got the goal attack high, then deep second phase is actually one v one instead of having that two v one in there. So it's just mixing it up depending who we play against. Absolutely. Uh, talk to me about training then you're getting further away from oh, the we're gonna keep you in. <laughs> talk to me about um the training side. We've had some questions about sort of the agility and the footwork that you need to be doing as a wing attack. Is that something you work hard on? Because it, there's such little space out there, especially when you're playing against sort of a box defence or a real unit that are clogging up the middle. Yeah, I think uh, especially this season for me, I've done quite a lot of plyos in the weights room. Um just kind of that quick step, lots of jumping, lots of hopping building that strength on single leg because I think the more balanced you are the quicker you can change off that change of direction and I think as a winger tag it's really important that you've obviously got a quick change of direction but then also mixing that up in terms of like obviously bodying up and um, just to mix it up and keep the defense guessing but I think it's a really important thing as a winger tag um, to have that agility. I think talking about the plyometrics, the jump and the bounce, um, really, really important. Do you watch any other players from around the world? I say that because Whitney Sooners, if you see her on Instagram, her plyo stuff and her speed agility and her footwork is insane yeah. for the Kiwi wing attack. It's funny you used to say that. I think they have a, I don't know what Instagram it is, but they have one over there that they do a lot of work with. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I've watched quite a lot of that and the footwork stuff that they do. Um, and then there's another guy that I follow on Instagram that does a lot of like plyos and things for change of direction. Um, and I've, yeah, just took quite a lot of his stuff to put into my own program. So I want to talk a little bit about the culture here at Seven Stars because you came off the back of last season. It was a fantastic season, but it was sort of, you were all thrown into the limelight. Yeah. Everyone went, oh, watch this yeah. game. What are they going to do this year? How has that kind of culture grown with players adding in and, and the trust as well that Joe Tripp has put in you all? Yeah, I think obviously we built on last season. We had kind of no pressure. No one expected anything of us. Um, but I think just kind of the culture we built here, like there's no no pressure as in we obviously make mistakes out there, but I think everyone's just around us. And if there's a mistake, we get straight back on defense. And I think it's quite a fun environment. Um, and obviously we've got lots of different changes this year, which can obviously be hard in a bench when you don't know who's coming on and off. Um, but I think that's what's going to kind of build us this season in terms of we've got so much competition but we're all trusting that and we if we do come off the court it's not because you maybe you played bad it's actually we need something different out there and I think what this squad has got this year is that yeah absolutely and you saw that today tactically when Thunder were coming out with all kinds yeah. of different uh, defensive setups and structures we had another question in about uh, the pocket ball and, and getting to circle edge is that um, sort of relevant now because I used to say about feeders hello oh here she is hello. we'll, we'll <laughs> talk that, that Metcalf has just entered the building I hate I'd hate to think what a debrief is like if you lost <laughs> you had a 15 goal win love I mean you could have been quicker I'll, I'll get back to you in just a second but sort of um, we talk about that pocket ball and, and wing attacks a lot of the time I go around and when I'm coaching it's all about get to the top of the circle but actually if you've got a wing attack that can feed from anywhere is that sort of irrelevant now yeah I think um for me, I do like the pocket in terms of obviously you get deep second phase and I think if you have your other mid court, you can swing it top. I think there's a lot of variation and as long as you're not too far to the baseline, I think 45, um, the ball can still go into your shooters quite easy. Um, but then just mixing it up, whether you body up on that second phase to get the ball or if you move um, onto it. Well, Nat Metcalf has joined us. She is in the room. <laughs> uh, the leading wing attack in the country at the moment. Uh, an impressive performance uh, this evening, 65-50 win over seven stars. And you got a rest as well. You went to the bench. Yeah, good game? Yeah, really good game. Thanks, Jess. Um, really enjoyed it. I think stars are an incredible side. Um, I think, Jess, you've had a phenomenal season so far and last year. So I think we knew that it was going to be a really tough game coming into this. So, yeah, really good to get a, a win on the board tonight. Well, I want to start with the tactical stuff. I've been picking Jess's brain, all things wing attack. Um, a different game this year, that short, sharp game. So we've seen Paige Reed in the shooting circle for you. And the short, sharp one twos, exits, could it be any closer body balls all the way down the court? How has that changed and adapted your game? Um, I really like that type of game. I mean, I love putting in a long feed. Wing attacks, we love to do that, don't we? Uh, yeah, um, but I think Paige has really like, challenged me in, into working on that short game as well and being able to feed a rotational circle. Um, so it's allowed me to be able to try and work on that front ball as well as giving the back ball at times. How hard is it then when you're playing like that to not get hooked into one thing? Because that's the danger, right? Yeah, definitely. And that's definitely something I still need to work on. I get so um, enticed in this front option. Um, but yeah, it's just making sure that we keep our vision up and ensuring that we've still got space in the circle. Because when you've got a rotational circle, defenders want to try and squish them together. So it's just making sure we're still using the whole circle.
I mean, both of you have got quite dominant shooters. Ziggy, Ziggy definitely has her voice heard. Um, and Lois Pearson tonight, I mean, she's quite unassuming of what she does, but her baseline drives are brilliant. When you haven't got someone who's yelling and screaming at you like that, is it just important that you keep that vision open? Yeah, definitely. And I think both Lois and Paige and Elmer and Anya coming through the ranks, um, those guys are just so hungry for ball and uh, want to do well for the team. So I think playing sides and, and things like that and those one-twos um, are really good. And to be honest, they just do all the work and then I just get to pass on the ball. <laughs> just, just do all the work. Yeah, just drifting around that, I saw. Um, I want to talk about recycling the ball as well because this is a big thing in the game, right? Going back to the back, back up. Why and how we're using it? Like, is it better to be purposeful so you know it's happening or is it a pure panic sort of third second we've got no option going forward? Um, I think it's a mix, um, especially for me. I think sometimes, like I said, on the third second when I'm still hoping my shooter will kind of become free, I then panic and pass it back. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's times where I look, actually I'm not happy, and I'll open up the other side instead of going back here to then open the other mid-court and instead of swinging it across to let the defence, I guess, come out on that. And now I want to talk about the swings around the circle then. You guys used that effortlessly today and it was really early. And I, look, again, when I go around, textbook netball is you don't swing from wide to wide and yet you used it so well to open up the circle. I think with that, the key thing is, I think you taught me this, that you've got to do it quickly, otherwise it's not on. <laughs> uh, you've got to do the wide to wide swing really quick, otherwise it's not on. And I think being able to just be more efficient in the, in the end third. So rather than recycling it and doing n numerous phases of play, because we all know that gets really tiring <laughs> in a 60 minute game. Um, I think if we can be efficient and not need our shooters churning in the circle, we can get that wide to wide swing nice and quick. As long as the other mid court repositions and gets top, <laughs> Karen would be saying. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, straight from the coach. Yeah. This is why they debrief, Jess. They just needed to chat about that. Well, listen, I'm gonna let you guys go in a minute. I just wanna quickly touch on the international stuff because when you are playing a short, sharp game like that, we saw against Australia, it, it's not always as successful, especially because they get around yeah. the body. So how hard is it then to transition if you're playing a season like that into sort of the international game that Thurlby wants? Yeah, definitely. And I think that is something that's still a work on for me at international. When the short game's working, brilliant. And then when that is being shut down, when the defender's getting in front, being able to still deliver that back ball, really important. So I think testing myself in um, Super League seasons and as soon as you get back into the England environment, getting that straight into your game is really important. Yeah, well, that variety happens because it's not just, of course, the Australians. You then got the Kiwi zone, then you've got, got the Jamaicans and the difference that they can do with the elevation as well. Is there anything you specifically do throughout the season in terms of training to make sure you're on top of that stuff? Um, we do a lot of feeding work. Um, Karen's an amazing attacking coach, so having her at Thunder is brilliant for us. So anything that we want to work on, we'll like feed back in, in the week after a game and, and make sure we do that in training. But I think just ensuring that we're having time feeding, working on how to break down a split circle, um, all things like that I think are really important perfect well listen I am going to let you go well you've cooled down I mean you've got no excuse I'm going to go and let you cool down um, Jess I know we don't always get the we I'm putting myself in your category guys we don't always get the accolades as wing attacks um, but I, I know the work rate that you're doing I know the training I also know how much leadership come from both of you as well um, it's been an impressive season so far this game didn't disappoint this evening I mean a dominant Thunder performance but still loads of lessons learned by seven stars we look forward to you guys in the rest of the season of course catching up with you internationally as well thank you ladies Thank you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>